All right. So I sat down with Angie Aki, and Angie has such an inspirational story. Um, Angie is extremely driven and motivated. In this episode, we talked about leaving her corporate job in sales where she was extremely successful. Uh, her chance encounter with someone on uh, on social media who is in real estate uh, at a birthday party. Um, Angie talks about starting out in real estate with wholesaling properties, getting into personal lending, and moving into commercial properties. We, we dive into mindset, limiting beliefs, imposter syndrome. Uh, Angie had to retrain her brain to go from uh, instant gratification to delayed gratification. And uh, we also talked about building the life that she wants right now and being able to control her retirement and her future. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode. It's filled with so many amazing points that Angie made and, and just uh, insight that she gave. Thank you for listening. Be sure to leave a five-star review uh, for the podcast and feel free to reach out if you want to talk. Welcome to Passive Investors Playbook. I'm your host, Charlie Hardage. In each episode, we'll sit down with successful people that turn to real estate to build and grow their wealth. We do a deep dive into why they chose real estate and what makes it so attractive to them. We explore why people in their industry could also benefit from passively investing in real estate. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, a doctor or a professional athlete, love your job or hate your job, our show is here to help you build a profitable real estate portfolio while maximizing your free time and minimizing stress. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from some of the best in the business. Welcome to Passive Investor's Playbook. This is another episode of Passive Investor's Playbook. Joining me today is Angie Aki. Angie has been a real estate investor for the past five years. She left a very successful pharmaceutical sales career in 2019 after 18 years in corporate America to enter real estate investing full-time. Angie discovered passive investing and absolutely fell in love with it. She currently invests both actively and passively. She has successfully executed over 100 real estate transactions as an active investor and has an equity share in over 1,500 doors as an operator, co-GP, fund manager, limited partner, or lender. She founded Ohana Investment Partners to bring the magic of passive investing to as many people as possible so that they can also grow their wealth alongside Angie without taking on another full-time job. Ohana Investment Partners focuses on multifamily and commercial assets in the Southeast and the Sun Belt states, as well as developmental projects and entitlement projects in Florida and Texas. Angie, thank you so much for being here today. I'm, I'm so excited to have you. Uh, it's definitely an honor to speak with you. Do you mind sharing with the audience a little bit more about your, your background and about your company? I'd be happy to. And thank you for having me, Charlie. It's an honor to be here. Um, Again, my name is Angie Aki. I am the owner and founder of Ohana Investment Partners. Um, to rewind a little bit, I am, as Charlie mentioned, I spent quite a long time in pharmaceutical sales and called on hospital systems throughout the state of Florida. And um, so I've been in sales for over 20 years. I am one of those people. I love sales. I, we, and my husband's in sales. We, you know, we always say nothing happens till someone sells something. Uh, and so we're a firm believer of that. Um, and so I tell you that because I, I had a great job. Um, people are always like, why'd you leave, leave pharmaceuticals? I had a great job. I had flexibility. I made really great money. And I just felt like there was something more for me that, that I was being led to something more. And it was almost like an itch that I couldn't scratch. So I, uh, obtained President's Club, which is like the highest uh, sales honor in 2018. And I quit the next July. So I waited to, so I could get my bonus July 1st. I was like, hey, by the way, I'm done, but I'll take my six month bonus. And so I entered into and I had already gotten into real estate investing a little bit. 
uh, beforehand um, and started in a mentorship program and learned about um, really a lot within single family. So learned about uh, flipping, uh, creative financing, wholesaling, and I ended up landing on wholesaling to exit my corporate career because quite frankly, I think it's the fastest path to cash and real estate investing. Um, but for those of you that don't know what wholesaling is, you're in essence getting a property under contract and you are finding an end buyer for that contract. You're assigning the beneficial interest of that contract and you get the margin or the difference between. So it can be very lucrative, but it is very high stress and it is very, very active. So it's like you eat what you kill, right? And so the moment one transaction closes, you, you have to go look for the next. So I did that very successfully for about three years. And at the end of 2021, or about Q3 of 2021, I had one yet another aha moment. So I had gone to a boot camp for multifamily or commercial real estate investing. It was in a quote unquote an apartment boot camp. And I went, oh my gosh, I like where is commercial real estate investing been? I didn't know. And the mentorship program I went through didn't even mention commercial real estate. I had no idea. And it was a like, it was a light bulb moment for me because it just made sense. It is very logical and it's, it's numbers driven. It's revenue and expenses and cap rate, really, when you boil it down. And I loved that. And I loved the fact that you can have more control with commercial real estate, which we can talk about later, but by forcing the appreciation by either increasing revenue or decreasing expenses, it is really powerful. And so you have more control over the value of the asset. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I don't want to do wholesaling long-term. It just wasn't a good fit for me and my family for a multitude of reasons. So I decided to jump full full steam ahead into commercial real estate investing and syndication. Um, that's how I do everything, jumping in with two feet. That's how I learned by fire is just my personality. And so I founded Ohana Investment Partners and um, that's what I do full-time now. So I help people passively invest in real estate. That is my full-time job is going out and finding offerings that match my investor's investing goals so I can bring those offerings to them. So um, that's what I do. I love that. Wow. That, that, there, there's a lot to uh, unpack there. So um, you were in sales uh, for over 20 years. Um, a lot, maybe all of that was in pharmaceutical. So you're calling uh, hospitals and uh, maybe doctors and and trying to trying to make some some money, make some sales there. Mm -hmm. um, you're re really good at it. Uh, waited till your bonus to leave, uh, which good strategy there, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, and I was in sales as well, Angie. And so I, I know how that is when you get a big check, big bonus. It's like, yep, all right, there you go. Um, but uh, it, uh, great job, great money, um, but you were not fulfilled. And I think a lot of people can resonate with that. Regardless, it doesn't have to be sales, doesn't have to be pharmaceuticals. A lot of people can resonate with, hey, I like what I do. I'm good at it, but I don't love what I do. It's not a passion for me. And uh, you, you were in a, a, a single family mentorship group, uh, but it was only residential, uh, nothing about commercial. You did wholesaling for three years. Again, very good at that, but that is not at all a part-time job. I mean, I guess it can be a part-time job, but you won't do very well. Um, and, and you mentioned high stress so much, so much stress with that because you're always trying to find um, the, the next property and, and the next buyer, right? And at the same time, a lot of times. So uh, that's not an easy, you know, um, uh, hour a, a week or so. Um, so again, very good at that, but you, uh, you thought there was something else. And so then a couple of years ago, you had another uh, light bulb moment, aha moment, and you went to a, uh, I think you mentioned a conference for commercial property. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said. Uh, commercial property is very logical. It's numbers driven and it just makes sense. And mm -hmm. I, it, it's funny because to me, if someone would have told me that years ago, I would have been like, yeah, right. There's so much going on with it. But then where I am now, it's like, yeah, I totally agree with you, Angie. With It, it is logical. It's numbers driven. and. Uh, another thing that you mentioned is uh, with commercial property, you have 
pretty much maybe not 100% control, but 95% control of the value of the asset. Um, and, and you can drive that up or drive that down if you don't do it right. Um, something that you did that I'm terrible at is taking action. You, you jump in with two feet. Um, you, you may get burned, but uh, you, you patch that up and, and you keep pushing through and you learn from that, which I'm very risk averse by nature. I don't take chances, don't take risks. And really only, only the last few years where I have been taking more calculated risks, that's where I've seen, you know, not only my net worth, but my mindset just explode, right? Uh, exponentially. Yeah. Um, you have to um, fail forward, fail fast. Yes. Love that. Yeah. yeah. I, I learned the fail forward term probably about the same time, about three years ago when my mindset, when, when I was working on my mindset. Um, and then something you do, which obviously I'm extremely passionate about as well as you help people invest in real estate passively, hundred percent passive. Love that. So I uh, want to go back, uh, let, let's start back with, with a career um, uh, over 20 years in corporate America. Um, you loved your job, or I'm sorry, you had a great job, you made great money, uh, but you weren't fulfilled. What, what, do you, what made you start looking uh, at something other than corporate America? Not even real estate, just in general. Well, it just kind of, it was happenstance. So I... Um... It was, a, I guess, a couple things, a couple factors came into play. Um, one was we started looking at real estate and had all, I had always been interested in real estate, but we, you know, we had this money, we're both in sales. And if you're in sales or if you're in another profession and you're a high income earning professional, at some point you go, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with this money? Like, what should we do with it? How should we invest it? We, you know, whether or not you maxed out what you want to put in the stock market, or I know some people are stock market averse after last year, mm -hmm. um, you know, but whatever the case is, it's like, what else and looking to diversify, what else can we do? So we looked, we actually looked at buying a single family house and I'm, I'm grateful that we didn't, um, mm -hmm. but we would have had a significant down payment. And I think the margin was going to be like 200 bucks a month. Now, I don't know what you do with 200 bucks a month. You can barely go out to dinner now with 200 bucks a month. Um, but so that kind of got me looking and interested in it. And then I ran into a woman at a birthday party and she had, I'd seen her on social media and she had done some flipping and I connected with her and she actually, we went out for coffee and she introduced me to the, um, the mentorship program. So I was like, well, heck yeah, I'll, I'll do that and figure it out. Cause she's like, you know, do you really, do you want to buy one property? And I was like, not really, I want more, but I don't want to have to deal with it. Um, so that's kind of how I stumbled upon real estate investing is I got into that mentorship and it, it did give me a lot of knowledge about all the different ways you can make money in real estate, because there are so many ways you can make money in real estate. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. I know it can be very distracting for a lot of people, um, but I decided, you know, I don't know if you've read the book, The One Thing, right? But you focus on, on one thing. And so I decided to focus on the one thing, which was wholesaling. Now I'm focusing on the one thing, which is commercial real estate investing. Love that. It's funny kind of how uh, your, your story of how you got interested in real estate by seeing someone that, uh, uh, you know, on, on the computer through social media and then actually talking to her in real life. And um, that led you down this path where you are today which is super cool. Uh, possibly if you never saw her or, or never talked to her, you might not be in commercial property. And so I think, uh, I think that's really, really cool story how that happened. Um, I, I love that uh, you were in wholesaling. You said, man, this is a lot of work, a lot of stress, very, very time consuming, very active. And then you, you got in the multifamily passively when you when you first heard that you could invest passively, what what did you think about that? Like how um, how did you act or, or react? I'm sorry uh, when you heard that you could passively invest. So I started my passive investing journey through private lending. So okay. when I got into this mentorship um, years ago, then I started becoming a lender. So I would lend money for flips and other things. And I was just thrilled that I could get a 10, 12% return 
and have it backed by real estate, right? It's collateralized, uh, secured with a note and a mortgage. And the asset was bought at 70 cents on the dollar in essence. So that's how I got into passive investing was through private lending. Um, And so it's, when I say, I mean, I talk to people all the time. I'm like, it's magical. It truly is magical. And, you know, Charlie, you and I had a conversation a little bit beforehand, but even talking to people, I've had people say, is this like a, is this a black market thing? Is this legit? Is this real? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. It's legit. It is one of the, um, you know, one of the things too, I I run an investor club at the business club that I'm uh, a part of. So one of my buddies that runs it with me, we talk about like, this is the, like the secrets of the wealthy. They invest in real estate. They invest in real estate passively. This is what, it's what the wealthy do. And most of the wealth that has been created over time has been through real estate. So you just have to figure out how to get that done. And passive real estate investing truly is magical because you're doing any due diligence or any of the active work up front to make sure it's a good offering for you, to make sure it's a good fit, to make sure it matches your investing goals, to make sure the operator is you know, a good operator and you know, like, and trust them. But then after that, after you sign the, what we call subscription documents or the paperwork and the private placement memorandum, which is something we file, right? And something that we're kind of overseen by the SEC. So it is very legit. But once you do that and you do the paperwork and you send in your wire, your job is done. Mm-hmm. Done. You get communications, you get updates, you get financial reports, most importantly, and most fun is you get distributions. So when I talk about passive real estate investing, people are like, yeah, you know, but everyone says everything's passive, right? Is it really passive? It is 100% truly passive. It is the, it is mailbox money. Once you enter into an offering and you're in and wire your money, it's mailbox money. That's, that's it. Um, and it, it is magical. And to be able to grow your money exponentially. And, you know, our goal is to double our investors money about every five years. And with interest rates, that's been a little, you know, a little more challenging, but we really, we come really darn close to it. So it may be a 1.8 X and I don't want to get too technical, but if you're 1.8 times in your money in five years or two times in your money, every five years, what does that look like? The snowball effect is immense and it happens very, very quickly. I love that so much. Um, I I actually sat down and kind of did the math. I'm a numbers guy. Uh, I'm analytical. And I did the snowball effect, um, as you call it, where my my, um, initial one-time investment, if I only reinvested that one-time investment and that's it, nothing else. Um, You know, when when I first started investing, figured I had, uh, I think it was 35 years or so. it would be, I think it was $6.4 million from a $50,000 investment. And I was like, wow, this is, this is insane. You know, and, and you mentioned that your friend thought it was black market and I had a very similar story. I thought it was a scam when it, when I first heard about it and uh, didn't, didn't educate myself because I'm like, yeah, obviously that can't happen. That's not true. Uh, but then when I, when I found other people doing it and started educating myself, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. This is amazing because I was so stuck in, in uh, my career. And, and I'm like, I know there's something better out there. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to get it. And uh, then as, as I educated myself and, you know, if I only doubled my money in five years or less uh, in five years, then 30, 35 years, it was like uh, 6 million. So it's insane. And so do, if you're listening to this, do the math. Yeah. Yeah, figure out what your investment would be just like Charlie did do the map because you know you just doing that very simple exercise will help your brain to register the fact because you your brain works in like little channels right so whatever is already run it out in there it's the path of least resistance and our brain functions almost in survival mode so it wants to protect us so your brain's automatically going to say, no, this isn't right, or this is different, or there's all these doubts and all these things that go in. So, you, you know, you almost start like carving that new path for your brain to start functioning within. 
but just something as simple as doing that exercise can be really, really impactful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for me, it, it, it truly was, and it still is, I think, you know, it, especially cause I, I tell uh, new investors that too, I, I, I did a LinkedIn post a while ago and, and I'll share like a little PDF that I did and I'll, I'll just break it down. I'm like, that's, that's a one-time investment, by the way. That's not if you invest uh, every year, $50,000. That's a one-time right. investment. And, you know, many, many investors, they want to start with one, you know, as, as little as they can at first, just until they understand it. And then now the questions aren't, what's the minimum? It's like, hey, how much do you have left? Because I want to be all in, you know, and, and so that it's not only my mindset has, has totally changed, Angie, but my, my first time investors to now second time investors, their mindset is too. It's like, what's, it's not, what's the minimum. It's how much can I put in there? Right. Um, yeah. And then what else is coming down the pipeline? Right. Cause yeah. we, we know what's coming. Like we have an offering open now. We just closed an offering. We have an open, an offering now and we have an offering coming down the pipeline. So yeah. it's, we're saying, Hey, what can I max out? Or how can I diversify within you know, what you're doing within, you know, in my case, it's Ohana Investment Partners, Charlie, within your case, it's different. But, you know, how can I diversify? How can I spread out? Because with syndications, that's another amazing thing. You can diversify very easily by asset type, by asset class, by geographical location, all like so easily. And it's magical. Yeah. It, I'm going to keep saying it because I'm going to, I'm going to help whoever's listening. Like we're going to create a new, you know, a new channel in your brain. It's like, it's magical because it is. Yeah. A- Angie, there's so much I, I want to want to ask you about, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out the, uh, the best path, but I, I, I truly think, like you said, the word magical, I really think it it is magical. I, I feel your passion in, in real estate. And I share that with you. Um, I, I think, it, and you kind of said rewire the brain or, or, or something to that effect, but um, I, I do want to talk about mindset. I want to talk about di- uh, diversification as well, because I know you're not only in apartments, but I want to start with mindset first. What do you think, uh, I, I know you read, um, you brought up the book already, The One Thing by Gary Keller, but what had a change in your mindset um, to, to be where you are now? So much. Yeah. I mean, so much. And I continue to work on it every single day. So it's like anything that you want to be good at, you have to practice and spend the time doing it. Mm-hmm. So I can recognize, I can recognize if I'm self-sabotaging or if I'm, you know, if I'm putting myself in an imposter syndrome situation, or if I have limiting beliefs, I can recognize that and call myself out on it and work through that immediately. So, you know, I think, and I um, spoke to someone earlier this week and they said, you know, I think mindset for me, right. Faith is my most important foundation. Mindset is my second. Um, you, you have to have that foundation. Um, so for me, I personally had to overcome limiting beliefs as to how much money I could make as an entrepreneur, leaving a very successful corporate sales career, because, you know, I had people told me, they're like, are you nuts? People told me I was crazy. One girl was like, you're never going to make as much money as you make in pharmaceutical sales. And thankfully I'm the personality. I'm like, yeah, right. Go like, watch me. And I did that first year I got out, I blew through the number. So, you know, for me though, I had to work through that limiting belief and realize and understand how much I can make as an entrepreneur. And then, you know, you hit another ceiling or you hit another roadblock and then you have to work through a different limiting belief. I am a big believer in owning your dream. So I'm a John Maxwell trained speaker and coach. I love John Maxwell. I think he's great. Um, You know, if you're kind of figuring out what you want to do, a great book is Put Your Dream to the Test. It talks about owning your dream. And so I'm constantly looking at what, how I've built my life and my business and saying, is this, is this right for me? Is my business serving me or is it vice versa? Because I was serving my wholesaling business. And that's why I literally cut it off at the knees. We went from revenue to zero, um, which takes courage, but you have to know, you have to own your dream and you have to be confident in what you're doing. Um, 
So I spend a ton of time on mindset. I read a ton of books. I listen to books. I listen to podcasts. Um, every once in a while, I'll cycle and listen to music. But most of the time, I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast or or something. Yeah. Well, I, I love that. And I think I'm, you know, I used to listen to the radio all the time, sports radio, just when, when I was driving downtown, you know, I had a 45 minute drive there and an hour, hour and a half drive back sometimes. And it was all sports radio just to kind of like, let me unwind, right. Let my brain unwind and, and just chill. Cause long day at the office and tra- I hate traffic. Right. Um, but I, I started listening to podcasts more and more and I would say, you know, I, what, what started my journey was r- realizing that I don't take risks and I haven't had a big failure, right? Because I don't take risks. And because I hadn't had a big failure, um, I wasn't able to learn all these amazing, you know, ideas and, and uh, change my mindset, like the wealthy mindset and, and things like that. I started uh, reading books, started listening to podcasts, still listen to music, still listen to sports radio. But it's, you know, the the balance of that is uh, way more books, podcasts and um, uh, audio books. So it, in, in my in um, my mind, Angie, I, that's been the biggest change. And everything I've done in the last three, three and a half years of of just even saying I need to change my mindset and realizing that I wasn't taking risks that's where all of my growth has happened, all of it. Um, and, and I think, you know, what you said, I, I love what you said about, um, you know, ask your ask yourself these questions. Are you uh, self-sabotaging? Uh, uh, do you have imposter syndrome? I suffer that from that all the time still. I'm getting better, but I still suffer from that. And then what are your limiting beliefs? And I love that you, you know, admitted you you suffer from some of those, but now you know where, um, that you're suffering from it and, and you can break out of it. You realize that. And most people probably don't realize that unless you put effort into it. So I love, I love that mindset. I could talk about this for so long because I, I truly feel, and probably you, you could say this too, Angie, when you started changing your mindset, that's when your growth happened, or at least most of it. Absolutely. I mean, I, I look at where I am today versus I left, it was almost, it was just over four years ago now when I left corporate. I don't even recognize myself, my life, my circle. Love that. I, I just, I don't. It's so different. And it's, you know, it, it's so empowering. And just even, you know, I just tore down a business and started over. Yeah. But I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I know this wasn't right for me. But once you, and once you do something, Right. So maybe that's a failure, depending on how you look at something. I built a business. I hate it. Maybe that's a failure. I have no idea, but I'm failing for it and I'm failing fast. So I was like, well, this doesn't work for me. I'm going to cut it off at the knees and really build something I love with my heart and soul that quite frankly, doesn't spit out cash from day one, like wholesaling does, but that's okay. You know, as long as you, you have a plan and I always have a plan. Um, but as long as you have a plan, I had money saved up, you know, and I'm, I'm a believer that I will have the prosperity that is due to me. Yeah, love that. I love that so much. And you you took a, um, you know, win now uh, situation at your corporate job, said, no, I'm going to I'm going to do it on my terms. You took another win now situation in wholesaling, said, uh, I'm passionate about real estate, but not that. And you said, okay, now I'm going to get into uh, um, uh, apartments. I know you're in mobile homes, uh, mobile home parks, and then short-term rental fund as well. And you said, you know, this doesn't provide the cash today, but it will provide over time. And, you know, you're, you're focused on the long-term, which I, I love that instead of instant gratification, it's delayed gratification. And you'll typically get a 10 extra return on delayed, right? So I will tell you, it's, it's been a work in progress because as a salesperson and a type A personality, I'm an instant gratification. I I've always said this, I'm an instant gratification kind of girl. I think we live in a very instant gratification kind of world. So transitioning to something that focuses on passive income and quite frankly, the payout, the primary payout for investors and myself as an active or passive investor is in five years. So you really have to retrain your brain. 
you know, what, and this is something I was talking about. I help small businesses with employee retention credit funding. But the reason I bring that up is because the customers I help today, they don't get their money, which means I don't get paid until they get their funds from the IRS, which, oh, by the way, takes five months. So talk about, you know, almost like a sales position where there's, it's not instant gratification. Yeah. You're helping someone and you're serving someone. And then five months later, there's your reward. You know, you're looking at syndications and there's, there's some money up front, you know, whether we're active, um, you know, there, if you're an active operator or fund manager, there's some money up front, but the, the bulk of it comes at five years. So again, that's just retraining your brain and figuring out what do you really want? Because my goal is to build my pipeline so that when my husband and I retire, you know, we're retiring and we still have money coming in. And I just realized this year, I don't think I ever want to retire. I love what I'm doing. And I just got comfortable saying that because we get so, you know, hung up on what we're supposed to say or feel or do, right? What society tells us. And I was like, I'm going to take all this time off this year. And, you know, I just want to keep taking an extra four weeks off every year. So eventually I'm working you know, zero weeks. Well, in my taking 16 week off plan this year, I noticed after three days, I'm climbing the walls. I'm like, what can I do? What, what's going on? Let me, and so maybe the answer for me is I don't retire and I work. I just slow down a little and that's okay. Yeah. So we have to build our lives around what is, what's best for us and what we want to do. So I bring that up because some people will say, you know, I left corporate. Does that mean it's right for everyone? Absolutely not. Some people love their jobs. Some people feel that security and don't want to leave because it would cause them huge anxiety and stress. And that's okay. You have to build your life as you want it. But I highly recommend you look at passive real estate investing as a vehicle to help build your, build your wealth so that you can do what you want to do. And it can look like whatever you want it to look like. Yes. Love that so much. Um, I, you you mentioned something that uh, you got to retrain your brain, um, and then you threw the word pipeline in there. That's a, a sales term. I, I mean, everyone's familiar with it, but you got to got to always be filling up your pipeline uh, as well because you know you, you need uh, sales coming in. But um, when when you were talking about that, Angie, you were talking about having deals uh, constantly come in, and, and then that way, you know, again, even though you are uh, pushing back that gratification five years or so right? Or five months in the case of the ERC um, tax credit. Don't know the exact term there, but the tax credit, um, you know that in the end, it's going to bring so much more back to you than if you get that instant gratification. And I love that because I, like you said, I think a lot of people do have that instant gratification mindset um, and, and, you know, it, don't want to judge people, but, but if you do push it back and, and focus on your future, you'll have a much better future than if you focused on the right now. So I love what you're doing with um, with all types of asset classes and, and uh, just love where your mindset is going. Um, I, I, I do want to talk about the different asset classes that you're in. Uh, you mentioned wholesaling and, and the single family. You're not doing that anymore. Uh, you're doing multifamily uh, value add uh, uh, apartments. Yep. You are in mobile home parks and mm -hmm. uh, you do have a fund, a short-term rental fund. So I yep. uh, want to talk about the fund first um, and, and uh, see kind of what that entails, um, you know, and, and um, if, if someone wanted to invest uh, in that fund, want to, want to uh, you know, have you pitch that and, and talk sure. about that? Yeah. Um, so that is a short-term rental fund. It is a Reg D 506C offering. So it is for accredited investors only. So yes, we can talk about that. So good thing we're starting with that one. Um, it is, so I have partnered with a great operating team that acquires and runs the Airbnbs. Last year we did, um, there was over 75 assets in fund one. This year they expect to be about a hundred assets in fund two. So, uh, you know, a lot of people really love Airbnbs and it's, it's a very sexy way to invest in real estate. Um, it looks really pretty. It, 
cash flows really well. So it's about 4x cash flow compared to long term rentals. Um, again, it looks really pretty. You see people posting stuff. Here's what we're doing. I just bought an Airbnb. Um, you know, and it's a way to invest in short term rentals and not have to do any of the work. So, you know, on a side note, I've talked to multiple people, three people probably in the past month. One woman was like, I have a, I have a short-term rental. I don't know what to do with it. I said, well, what do you mean? She's like, oh, we don't have any rentals. We don't have anyone coming. It's not renting. Like, but she's like, I don't know. Maybe I'll sell it, convert it to a long-term rental. And she is a real estate investor full-time. It's what she does. So I say this because people think it's really easy and you just buy, you know, you just buy a property, put some furniture and dishes in it and throw it on Airbnb. Well, there's so much more. It's like anything, right? There's so much more that goes into it behind the scenes that you don't see. You know, another girlfriend has a, you know, has a vacation home and they're renting it and they have very few rentals. You know, they have a bunch of rentals around them. Theirs isn't getting much. They're, they're overpriced and not providing anything spectacular or extraordinary compared to their competitors. You know, then I have someone else that said, Hey, I looked at it. I looked at Airbnbs. They look great. I don't want to do the work. I don't want someone to call me. I don't want, you know, she runs her business full time. He's a police officer and he's like, I don't want to deal with it. Okay. So now enter all of those three situations are really great examples of what you may look at. And some, I will say caveat, some people run Airbnbs and they love them as yeah. mom and moms. They, they enjoy that. But if you're looking to invest in Airbnbs or short-term rentals and not have any of the work and have cash flow, then you can look at something like the short-term rental fund that I have available um, because you get the benefits of short-term rentals without any of the work. So because it's a portfolio of short-term rentals, even though these are residential homes and single families, it's looked at and valued just like a commercial asset. So we're able to do things like a cost segregation study. And if you're listening and don't know what that is, that's okay. Um, but you're basically taking the asset and you're breaking down different components of it and, you know, fast forwarding or quickening or accelerating. That's the word I was looking for, accelerating the depreciation. So what that does is that's a benefit to our investors because that provides what we call paper losses. And no, that does not mean that your investment is losing money. That means you have quote unquote lost money on paper, hence the word paper losses. And you take that paper, whether it's physical or electronic to your CPA and you say, hey, here you go, Mr. and Mrs. Accountant, please make sure this is reflected on my taxes because that has the potential to reduce your taxable income. And if you are a high income earning professional or you're not, right, we're all looking to decrease our tax burden. That is a great way to do it. So the short-term rental fund is a really great way to, if you want to tip, you know, kind of tiptoe into passive real estate investing. Again, it's for accredited investors only, but the minimum investment is 25,000. So it's not a heavy, you know, you're not going in and it's not a hundred thousand dollar minimum. It's a $25,000 minimum. That equity margin, which is what we look to, you know, double your money or 1.8x, it is the range is 1.8x to 2x your money um, within that whole time, which is four to six years. And there is a preferred return and an equity split. So if that's something you're interested in, I would be more than happy to talk to you about that because, you know, personally for me, I don't, I do some active real estate investing, but it's more on the asset management side. I don't want someone to call me because they can't figure out how to work the keypad. Yeah. And like, you may listen to this and be like, that's not going to happen. It happens all day long. Or I had a friend of mine and he's like, oh, I had to replace the disposal again. I'm like, why? He's like, oh, someone put a shot glass down the disposal. I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck? Right. So it's not and your, your property does get a lot of wear and tear. Um, so if it's something that you want to invest in and you want a way to truly passively do it, looking at something like a short-term rental portfolio is a really good option for you. There's fixed debts, uh, excuse me, fixed debt on all of the assets, which is also great. As you were talking, Angie, I, um, I realized that about three years ago or a little more when I was uh, learning more about multifamily, 
And I was diving into it. I wasn't all in yet, but I joined a, um, a couple of Facebook groups for short-term rentals because I wanted to do that as well. And uh, one of those groups, I, I literally exited like last week because I don't want to do that. Um, you know, there's so many horror stories. You, you talk about uh, tenants can't get in the, uh, the, the door, the keypad's not working. Yeah, that happens all the time. I mean, probably a week, uh, a post a week in that group. And it's just like all these little things. I'm like, man, I never want to do that ever, ever. But if you have the team in place to do that, um, you know, there, there's teams that that's all they do. That's what they specialize in. Um, I know, you know, that, again, that's not if you have a lease for 12 months, you have a tenant for 12 months, you know, you, you talk to them a few times a year. But that might be it, right? Um, but if you have a Airbnb uh, for a year, you're talking to probably, depending on where it is, 100, 200 people, right? And so that's a full-time job. It, it can be. Um, and so I, what I love about your fund is you're allowing people to get that that much higher cash flow. It's a lot more work, but it's not more work for the passive investor. It's, it's more work for your team, uh, which is fine, right? But not for... Uh, the passive investor, and, and so they're able to get um, uh, more cash flow. I don't know too much about the short-term rental as far as appreciation, um, but I do know that there's a whole heck of a lot more uh, cash flow, <laughs> especially right now with interest rates where they are. So I think that's that's amazing, and, and it is a 506, uh, 506c fund, which means uh, for accredited investors only. Do you mind talking a little bit about uh, what accredited means? Oh no, no problem. Um, so there are a, a few other ways that you can qualify as an accredited investor, but the, the easiest kind of questions that you can think of in your head is, do you and have you made $200,000 in the past two years? And do you expect to make that this year? If you're an individual, if you're investing with your spouse, have you, and do you expect to make 300,000. So again, it's a two year look back and or do you expect to make 300,000 this year? So that's one way you can qualify is based on the, the money that you're bringing in, right? So if you have a W-2 job and you can easily show that, that's probably one of the easiest ways to qualify as an accredited investor. Or you can qualify if you have a net worth of over $1 million, not including your primary residence. So those are the easiest ways to qualify. Um, when you're investing in a 506C offering, you do have to provide verification. So we actually work with a third party that provides that verification for free. Um, or you can get a letter from your accountant or your financial advisor or planner um, stating that you're an accredited investor as well. And that will work. Um, but yes, does awesome. that answer that question for you? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Um, and... Uh, I mentioned mobile home parks a little bit. What what are you doing with uh, mobile home parks and, and why uh, mobile home parks? So I have, a, I own a mobile home park with a friend of mine. He and I bought it um, about a year and a half ago. We are looking for more mobile home parks. We have not syndicated a mobile home park, um, but we would not be averse to it. Why mobile home parks? Um, it is one of the ways you can answer the affordable housing uh, crisis that we have here in the United States. Um, you know, is it the solution for everyone? No, but is it one way that we can answer it? Yes. And, you know, if we can make a drop in the bucket and just keep doing stuff like that, it's really, you know, it can help and it's not going to help everyone, but however many mobile homes you have, it's helping that many families. Um, so we have a mobile home park. We're looking for more. If you know of anyone that wants to sell a mobile home park, please let me know. Um, but that's the, that's the why behind mobile home parks. Um, there are also, I mean, you can have, depending on the situation, you can have a pretty good margin on them as well. They're less, um, typically to renovate. They come with some other problems. So there's, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but it's, a um, you know, it's an asset class that um, is really, it's needed right now. Yep. Love that. I, I'm actually looking at one in, uh, in Nashville, uh, Nashville oh. area. Um, it's exciting. Lot, lots of issues with that, but uh, I, I, I love what you said about the affordable housing. I think, um, 
you know, mobile home parks, they, they definitely get a bad rep, but I don't think they deserve it. I, I, I think some deserve it, but it's really more the owners. You know, a lot of those have been owned for 40 years. 30, 40, 50 years, and it's just bringing in cash and they're not fixing it up. And I've visited a couple um, over the last few months and like, how's that trailer still standing? You know, oh, and, and blue, I, I it's that. like bubble gum and tape. Is, yeah. We've seen some, it is horrible, but to your point, it's, it's like anything in life, right? You're, you're going to have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Same thing with mobile home park operators and owners. You're going to have the good, the bad, and the ugly. And yeah, some of these, some of these men and women have purchased these mobile home parks. And the reality is some of them are aging and they're getting older. So where they may have taken care of it in the past, I don't know. I'm not here to judge them, but now they don't have the the capacity. They're not able to, or they're tired or whatever. We literally call them tired landlords. They're, they're tired. They're over it. They need to retire and move on. Um, but yeah, I mean, you see, everything. We had a tenant when we bought it, we went in, we had to move the tenant out the floor. It literally looked like a pair of Swiss or a piece of Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh my gosh, this is a huge liability. We got to get you out so that we can get, and we had to renovate the whole unit. You know, how are these saying we had a tub that was like, was it a tub or a toilet? Something was like falling through the floor. I'm like, we, we have to redo this, but it's, you know, my partner and I talk about it. We're like, you know, we're, we're updating them to our standards, which is very different than, than where it was. Right. Um, not to judge that person, but everyone's, you know, operates differently. Yeah. Well, Angie, we have a few minutes left uh, in, in the conversation. And so I know, I know you've already mentioned uh, the one thing and put your dream to the test, a uh, couple of those books, but do you have another book that you've recently read or, or listened to that stands out? There's so many. I read <laughs> all the time. Um, you know, the the power of one more is a really good one. The slight edge, if you haven't read it, is a really good one. Um, the one I read towards the end of last year that was really impactful was called The Gap and the Gain. And I think that's really important specifically, uh, you know, for any entrepreneurs that are listening to this, um, but it really helps you. It's, it focuses on mindset and asks you and questions you, are you in the gap or the gain? Which really is like, are you looking at this from a positive perspective or are you, you're in the gap, right? You're, you're looking at what you don't have versus what you do have. It really helps you also whether or not, you know, if you're a passive investor and you're like, well, I've only invested $50,000, how am I going to get to 6 million? Well, then you're in the gap. But if you look back and say, hey, I invested $50,000 and this was my first investment and this is going to grow into $6 million, then you're in the game. But it really helps you kind of tweak. And it was just, it was a different way of hearing it. I listened to it as an audiobook, but it's a different way of hearing it or reading it that really helps you take a step back because we're, it, no matter what you're doing in life, Sometimes you can't see the forest for, for the trees. So you have to take a step back and look over your shoulder and look at the long journey and all the way you've come to become the person you are today. Instead of, you know, we're always striving for more. We're always striving to get better. But look at how far you've come. So I think The Gap and the Gain is a really good book and recommendation for, for people. I have awesome. so many, like my head is exploding. I, I, I love reading. Reading right. and learning. Reading and what? Learning. Oh, yeah. Uh, love, love that. And I, I love what you said, looking at how far you've come versus looking how far you have to go, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think I, I suffer from that. I, I, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. But I look back three, three and a half years ago. Holy cow. Totally different person. Um, you know, my, my financial freedom clock started taking three and a half years ago and, and never would have dreamed uh, I'd be where I am now. And I, I love that you um, uh, recommended that book, The Gap in the Gain, as well as yeah. several other books too, but uh, yeah. The Gap in the Gain. <laughs> um, Angie, what can people expect to see from you and your business over the next few years? Amazing things. Um, so you can expect to see a lot, um, a lot more offerings, just continuous offerings 
um, both in the multifamily space, uh, short-term rental, mobile home parks. We're actually looking for some storage facilities as well. So across various asset classes, um, you look to see events. I'm hosting events. I host virtual events and in-person events. I think building community is a huge part of what I do. So, um, you know, both virtual and in person. And then if you are listening to this and you are a female, I am launching um, some really awesome things coming up that are specifically female focused and for women. So um, look for that as well. Very cool. That, that's, that sounds amazing. You mentioned amazing things. All of those sound really amazing. So you're not a liar. Um, <laughs> um, how, uh, how can people reach you if they want to learn about um, uh, short-term rentals, maybe your journey uh, from, from uh, sales to real estate or um, you know anything that we've talked about mindset? How, what's the best way for people to reach you? The best way is to go to my website, ohanainvestmentpartners.com. Again, that's ohanainvestmentpartners.com. You can go to my website. You can sign up as an interested investor. You can sign up for our newsletter, which is where you'll get notifications of any upcoming events. Uh, You can also email me, Angie, at ohanainvestmentpartners.com. I I personally respond, receive and respond to the emails. I think that's important to know. Um, and then I'm on social media. So you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, all under Angie Lee Aki. And my last name is spelled A-K-I. There's not a lot of us out there. So um, if you put that in, you'll be able to find me. Um, feel free to DM me, shoot me a message, whatever, send smoke signals. I would be happy, uh, more than happy to connect with you. Um, and Angie, I do have all, all of your social media handles. I uh, also have your calendar. So I'll put that in the uh, show notes, just double checking that I have everything. Looks like I do. Yep. Have your email too. So um, Angie, thank you so much for being here. I, I love just listening to your story and, and uh, learning about your journey and, and especially the, the mindset uh, shift that you had, the radical mindset shift that you had to, to go through. Uh, and it was, I'm sure is a lot, um, and you didn't do it once you did it twice, but, uh, you know, with leaving corporate America and, and leaving wholesaling, both very well paying jobs, but, um, now you're doing amazing things at Ohana, um, helping, uh, hundreds and hundreds and, and probably thousands of, of other people and families achieve financial freedom. Love that. Thank you so much for being here. It's been awesome talking to you today. Thanks for having me, Charlie. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to today's show brought to you by H&K Investment Group, your home for passive investing. If you want to learn more about how you can invest with us, please check out our website at hkigllc.com. Don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to our podcast. Please leave us a review to let us know how we are doing. Feel free to connect with me directly on LinkedIn or Facebook. As always, I'm your host, Charlie Hardage. Catch you next time.